sensing murder is absolutely ridiculous. Even when I was a kid, I knew it was a sham. Each episode of the show started off with a bizarre statement that they had tested 75 psychics in New Zealand on a case. All of the psychics seem to have just been chosen for their massive hand movements, I think. 75 psychics from across New Zealand were tested. One of these New Zealand psychics, Sue Nicholson, has been chosen to investigate Sarah's disappearance. The psychics would then sense a few things about the spirits. Calvin Cruikshank was extremely creepy to the spirits sometimes. She's got beautiful eyes. Her skin's really nice too. Hey Calvin, could you go back to finding out who the murderer is, please? All I know is that she's looking pretty fine. She wants me to plait her hair, or she wants me to give her hair some plaits. She wants me to have a moustache as well. Okay, pretending that you can speak to ghosts is one thing, but pretending that a ghost wants you to have a moustache, that is disgusting. Where do you get off? In cemeteries, probably. He's gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> no, I use the word gorgeous because he, that's what he wants me to use. Okay, he told me to say that, all right. The ghost made me do it. I am not gay, Dad. <laughs> Most of the stuff they talked about to the ghost was completely irrelevant and unnecessary to the storyline. She must like Jim Beam and Coke. Because she keeps saying, just like you. <laughs> Hang on. So the ghost can sense things about the psychics now too? Sensing that a spirit who talks to spirits likes drinking spirits. The psychics were sometimes very rude to the spirits. Let me touch your face. I wouldn't say she's got a fat face. Deb Webber was incredibly judgy as well. She's telling me that she's a prostitute. <laughs> she's asked me if I want a job. <laughs> I work with Jane now. <laughs> Honey, you're a psychic. Don't think you're in any position to make fun of people's career choices, thank you. <laughs> The spirits were sometimes very shady to Calvin as well. Yeah, he's saying, who ate all the pies? <laughs> it's a bit of a joke. Now, I'm not joking, bitch. <laughs> now, you'd think that when the psychic guessed something wrong about the ghost, the editors of the show would just edit it out, right? But sometimes they clearly could not be fucked. I get one child really strong. One. Uh, girl. It's a boy. At least she got it on the second guess. There was just so much unrelated info we got in each story. Because he's giving me bristles. He says, oh, I couldn't give a stuff if I shaved or not. This is the first time that this ghost has been able to communicate with the living world in over 20 years. He's telling you about his shaving process? Okay. Another thing I found very strange about the show, the psychics were supposedly leading the cameramen to find clues about the death, then sometimes they'd just walk into a random house without permission, no explanation. The production crew don't know the area and have no idea where she is taking them. A lot of memories in here. I'm hearing her scream. I'm hearing her... I can hear her screaming. Ah! Sue Nicholson from Sensing Murder just broke into my house! Someone help! Both Sue and Deb did this in every single episode. Unsettled by the energy at the house, Deb asks to leave. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to ask to leave this house that I was never invited into. I just feel unsettled. It's almost as if I was not welcome in this house that I just broke into. I was getting weird vibes from the family who were eating their dinner while I was walking around. Yes, I do feel that they were murderers. The psychics would then sense a few things about how the murder happened. This guy ran on foot. I can see sneakers and I can see jeans. Ah! Sensing sneens. She's really emotional. Well, she would be murdered. Sensing that someone would be emotional when they were being murdered. There was also a special episode of Sensing Murder called Psychics Revealed, which delved into the lives of the psychics. Deb Webber believes Aboriginal spirits chose her to guard over the forest in her backyard. Okay. 
Where are they now? Where did you go, guys? After taking a seven-year hiatus, Sensing Murder returned last year, which means a brand new set of murderers to never catch and a brand new intro and theme music. The psychics are still as sharp as ever on the new series. The trees have got um, leaves on them. Whoa! She's still got it, folks. No, oh, I feel like he's been murdered. Nice. Sensing murder. Oh, actually, sorry, that is the name of the show. Sorry. The psychics have gotten a little bit older, though. Oh, God, I had the most terrible pain in my chest, so I don't know if he stabbed her or... Or maybe I've just got acid reflux. I'm not sure. One of those two. The psychics still act very confused when they're sensing murder. Why do I keep seeing a knife in his hand? Uh, you've been on the show for five seasons. The show's called Sensing Murder. Do you want to take a guess why he might have a knife in his hand? The new series was hosted by Sarah Potts. Fuck yes. Sarah or Sandra? Sandra? Sandra, Sandra Potts. S A R. A-H-A. Saraha Potts. Oh my gosh, I would absolutely kill for a show where Sue Nicholson talks to dead Shoreland Street characters. Craig, you've got a fat face. Shanti, you're a prostitute. Thank you and good night. That'll be $50. Calvin was only on one episode of the new series and he did a terrible job. He kept pretending that he couldn't get a connection with the spirit, kept saying that the spirit was too scared to talk. Basically, you tell me what happens, otherwise I walk. Meanwhile, Sue Nicholson's just having a laugh with that exact same spirit about pies. Pies. <laughs> He's laughing to me about a pie. Who had all the pies? <laughs> Calvin is unable to reconnect with the spirit of Merv's only son. It's disappointing for everyone. Even Sarah Potts is over Calvin Crookshank's bullshit. She's like, no, even Shorty Street was more realistic than this crap. They also hire a private investigator at the end of each episode to try and use the clues that the psychics gave to solve the murder. The investigator's main tactic for looking for clues just seems to be going on the NZ Herald website. So what I discovered was a, an article by this victim's mother. Uh, look, I'm doing an investigation. Um... Why do you sound like Kermit the Frog? There are also two brand new psychics on the new series. Karen Anderson and Kerry Marie Callender, who, by the way, post readings on her Facebook page, but every time she posts them, she adds a bizarre selfie to it. Are you okay? This is not as good as Sue Nicholson's social media presence, that's for sure. Deb Webber is still on the show, unfortunately, and has stooped to her absolute lowest in a recent episode, making some absolutely ridiculous claims about the murderers. I swear, I reckon one of them's got AIDS. I just got a real, um... I don't know why I said that, actually. Hey, Deb Webber, don't lump AIDS victims in with murderers, thanks. You have no idea what those people have been through. You have no evidence. You're a fucking fraud. This show is supposed to be a fun little Kiwi Tally classic, but it's exploitative and dangerous bullshit that should not be on TV at all. The victims' families deserve better. And so does Sarah Potts, to be honest. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>